Good morning, traders. Welcome to the weekly review and the week ahead, the shortened week ahead, from your friends at Privateer FX. I was having some technical difficulties, so bear with me, but I think we're, I think we're in business here. If I can get my mouse to work on this monitor, there, there it is. Anyhow. Here's an S&P chart. You can stare at that while you listen to some of my commentary here. Start things off. So we've got, obviously had a crazy week last week in, uh, in risk off and, and mainly equities. Um, just looking through my, my notes, but things like dollar yen dropped a per, uh, 2%, closing up 111.20, Aussie dollar was down 2%. Cross yen was down anywhere from one to Aussie yen was actually down 3.9 percent. Kiwi yen, Kiwi yen down 3.2. Cad yen down 3.5. So, you know that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> Those are risk currencies. Um, you know, WTI crude was down over 10 percent, um, and the S&P 500 was down seven. DAX was down three. You know, Nasdaq went negative on the year. So you get the you get the theme. Bear with me a second. You get the theme of uh, you know as a pure risk off. Uh, you know we took out some 2,000. Um, I'm gonna pull up this WEI chart here. I think we we looked at this last week. Here we are year to date. Dow Jones down 9.2. S&P 9.6. And the NASDAQ completely shit the bed last week. Um, if you remember, it was the only major market that was up marginally, I think maybe about a half percent. So it dropped about 8% last week. <clears throat> so it is a, indeed a sea of red. The, the Santa rally that everyone was hoping for did not happen. It is funny, though, um, if you look at Friday's action, you had things like the, the Vespa was up small. So some of the European markets were up a little bit, but, you know, they, I would imagine they get hit in, uh, you know, back in the European Open. Hang Seng was up a little bit. Um, but a sea of red, we're, we're approaching bear market territory, uh, at least from the, the all-time highs. The NASDAQ and S&P are down some 20%. The stock, uh, the stock CME is opening actually right now as we speak. Uh, I'm going to be getting a lot of signals here, so I need to close this. Uh, it looks like the S&P is 2407, so we're down a little bit. So you're seeing a little bit of selling um, here right in the open, and they, they, they literally have opened right as we started speaking. Um, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll keep an eye on that um, during the video. Um, I tweeted something out saying I, I do think we might get a little bit of a bounce in risk. Um, you know, there were rumors about Trump talking about firing Powell because of the last rate hike. Trump can't really fire Powell. So uh, Munchen came out and is trying to kind of soothe markets. Uh, he basically was saying that Trump is not going to fire Powell. They're going to have a meeting, a sit down probably next week after Christmas, you know, maybe even tomorrow. Um, and Munchen from his, uh, his fancy house in Cabo in Mexico, where he's on holiday, um, called uh, all the, the major U.S. bank CEOs and um, – Wanted to make sure that there was that they would be providing liquidity tomorrow. It's a short, uh, it's a half day for the equity market, um, you know. But with the, the this sell off that is seems to be gaining steam as uh, as the week went along, um, he felt that it was necessary to you know, make sure the banks will be there and they'll be fully staffed and they'll be providing liquidity and um, all the all the bank CEOs, you know, that would be like the Jamie Diamonds of the world. Um, assured him that they would indeed be in the market and would, you know, do their best. So for me, um, you know, I'm thinking that this might be, and we did finally reach this 24 
11 level that I've been targeting and I think I've been talking about um, you know for the last 300 points um, this is a support level where we were expecting um, a, a pretty decent rally um, you know the market is, is pretty well short at this point and uh, with liquidity and everything else I actually think that there's just as much risk to the top side um, you know getting a hundred to 200 point rally in um, the S&P 500 between now and year end as there is for it to sell off another hundred or so points so for me um, we're taking a little stab at the, the top side now and <clears throat> both S&Ps and We've Delta hedged some Aussie yen puts. Um, you know, we're getting close to our strikes in the Aussie yen that expire at the end of the month, and Aussie dollar is approaching the um, uh, 7021 level. So, um, why don't we start? We'll start out with currencies just to put things in perspective here. But um, one thing I wanted to read and this might be a little shorter video. Um, you know, we're kind of in the middle of the holiday season. I, plan on being in front of the screens for <coughs> at least till midday tomorrow. Um, a friend of ours, um, a, a guy that we, we subscribe to his research, he said, my, my advice how to act in this tough market, humble if short, measured confidence if buying this week, patient if caught out long, but reevaluate your longs, and take tax losses before year end, and be sympathetic to those who are worried and upset. So, you know, we went from only just buying dips for years to now selling rips is what, what they keep calling it. And I think a lot of people have been caught out because they've just been complacent. And this friend had, had been turned cautious at the end of summer and went into cash and he's called it pretty well. Um, now sentiment, if you, if you look at the sentiment readings, um, NASDAQ and S&P are somewhere around 5%, so low single digit. It's been down here sub 10 for a while. Um, you know, it can hang around these levels as uh, if equities continue to fade lower. Um, the VIX is like 96%. This is not a time, the, the risk reward of trying to be short risk is really, really poor. So I'm not saying you need to go out and you got to buy stocks tomorrow in the, the four hours that the market will be open or, you know, buy risky currencies like the cross yen. But what I am saying is that the risk reward is very poor to be adding to any sort of cross, short cross yen, short S&P, short NASDAQ, short Bitcoin, whatever. Uh, speaking of Bitcoin and, and Ethereum, they, um, we talked about this last week, they enjoyed a pretty healthy uh, rebound. <clears throat> we had some good buy signals last week and Topic is in whatever it takes moment to prop up oil prices. Um, what did they do? It was like 20 to 30 percent. I think Ethereum was yeah, Ethereum was around 30 percent higher last week, and <clears throat> Bitcoin was about 25 percent higher. So, um, you know, that should help risk sentiment. Now that um, you know that that they kind of were leading, they're well ahead of the equity sell-off, and um, so you might get a you know. You, now you're seeing a little bit of a year-end rally in um, in crypto that it could help tech stocks as well and some of the um, index futures. Um, why don't we get into some of the charts? Uh, daily Aussie, you can see here we're approaching the low of the year, which is 7021. Um, we are trading 7040 here in the early Asian session. Um, Euro dollar came back down. Um, still, just seems to love to close on the, you know, one. Let's see where to close on uh, Friday. It closed at uh, one thirteen seventy. So you know we're back on this one thirteen handle. We did have finally have a, a day on Thursday. I believe it was yeah Thursday. It closed up on the one fourteen handle. Failed pretty miserably up here at the. Um, it was 100 day 114.80 area so we're back in a range this isn't doing anything um you know the the, the more the more interesting pairs are aussie and we're going to go over to some of the end crosses because those are the ones that seem to be moving so australian dollar approaching the year's lows 
um, cable hasn't really done much of anything, so we're not going to bother with that. You can see the Kiwi dollar is, is really outperforming the Australian dollar, whereas you know the Kiwi dollar is low of the year is way down here. It's on the 64 handle. So we're um, approaching. This is at Fibo I drew. Uh, we're approaching the 50% retracement from the October lows. Um, dollar CAD just keeps marching higher. It's actually kind of turning kind of parabolic. Um, and a lot of that's on, you know, just the kind of a risk off and oil weakness. Um, dollar yen finally got things going. You can see this big red bar on Thursday. We haven't really had a bar like that all, all year, the big down bar. And look how it touched the 200 day. It's also, I think, the cloud bottom. It is also a FIBO that I do not have drawn here, but you know, it's hugging this 200 day. If we start closing below the 200 day, there's a lot of backing and filling to do <coughs> from this, these years lows, which are way down at, on the 104.60 area. Why don't we go ahead and draw the FIBO while on this chart, and then we'll hop over to some cross yen. Um, and then after that, we will go into the uh, some of the equity complex. So 110.75 is the third fib of the year, and the year is low. And we've got this 110.88.90, which is the 200A. So we are getting into you know an area of support. Again, this could the the, the kind of thesis of a potential for a, a bounce in risk seems. Um, more likely than a, another leg down. Um, cross yen. Here's Aussie yen. So we've been short that. That's made a new low for the year. Um, that happened on Friday. We are a touch lower, it looks like, from, I, I believe it, it gapped open a, a little bit lower, but I'll take that Fibo out. Um, so that, that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, we got we got targets lower. 70... Go to the weekly 7775, I think, is a FIBO. Um, and I've got my strike just down somewhere right around there. Um, here's a weekly. I gotta clean this chart up. Let me get rid of this one. And let's add one. So from the lows back in, this is way back. This is 2016, was that real major low here on the 72 handle. <clears throat> up to the highs, up to 90, and change. Um, you know, we've got room. Here's a, there were some weekly lows here at 78, 60. We took those out. We do have this low here, which is interesting, which is 76, 80, which also matches up with the 76, 60 Fibo. You know, and this is a, a year 18 month um, Fibonacci retracement, so. Nutchen uh, called C as of largest banks. We'll talk with Fed, SEC. Sorry about these. This is my Bloomberg squawking away. Um, anyhow, so that's Aussie yen. Um, CAD yen, we talked about dollar CAD. Um, you know, oil weakness, risk off. Um, had a big, big red candle, big down week. Um, we're getting close to the year's lows, which come in, you know, only about 90 points lower. Uh, Euro yen looks like crap, but not really interested until we break this low 125 and 124.65 um, but certainly looks heavy that could be that could be driven by some euro weakness could be driven by more yen strength um, you can see here's that that summer low and um, sterling yen that looks pretty weak kiwi yen big down week um, so I think you get the picture <coughs> on as far as risk off goes. Um, let's pop over to the um, equity complexes. Um, I don't know what this thing is. I gotta get rid of this line. That was a weekly trend line that I had drawn. Um, get rid of that. Remove all drawing tools. Big down week, when I say 7-ish percent lower in the S&P 500, we're under this um, 
100 week moving average or actually not too far from the 200 week moving average um, but again uh, for me you see these daily bars one two three four five six seven seven straight daily bars lower here we are at 2410 um, the risk reward is not great being short and I had a target at 2411. Um, NASDAQ, we broke 60, 6166 was the old low of the year. Um, 6160 was the old low of the year in February on the, on the vol implosion. And you can see how we took that out on Friday, closed well below it. Um, how about Texas oil well consolidated for a bit and then you know took another leg down um, really nothing out nothing out over the weekend that's gonna really save that but um, the VIX closed above 30 for the first time in ages Let's take a look at that chart so this is probably the the second or third highest daily close. Yeah, so the highest daily close of the year is way up here. What is that, 37? We got up to, in the ball implosion, 50. And then we had another daily close, 33.40. So this is, yeah, this is the third highest daily close of the year. So we're, you know, we're watching that. Again, with, with sentiment just in the, in the shitter, um, you know, trading around 5% bulls and a lot of these... Um, a lot of the equity um, measures of sentiment, the AII, the put call ratio, all these things are, you know, at extremes. So I am not that interested in um, selling equities down here. But, you know, you might get more retail selling um, as we approach year end. Um, you know, they can take capital gains losses this year for the first time in probably 10 years. And, uh, yeah, so, I, you know, there, there could be some more selling, but you got to wonder how much of it is already in the price and how much has, it already, has already been done, given the fact that we are, uh, you know, we have a, a short week this week um, with Christmas on Tuesday, and you got a half day on uh, Monday, you got a half day next Monday, which is New Year's Eve in the U.S., so... <clears throat> I just feel like uh, maybe maybe we get a little bit of bounce risk and um, we can revisit this thing and see where we're at on the first trading day of the year. Um, economic data, the calendar's light. Um, let me go through my notes here. Week ahead. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't really think there's anything tonight. <clears throat> I keep an eye out on the headlines, though. Um, Looks like Powell's job is safe. Looks like Muchin has, um, you know, spoken to all the powers to be from the big banks, and they're going to provide liquidity. They'll be there tomorrow. They'll be there the rest of the year. And uh, if there was ever a time for the plunge protection team to step in, it would probably be right now. I wish them luck because <laughs> this is a this is a uh, a negative tape and. Uh, we need a little shift in sentiment at some point, and you know these these this market is really really short risk, and um, I could I could easily see a, a hundred plus point bounce in the S and P's, and um, just to stop those guys out. Um, anyhow, I wish you luck today. Um, keep things tight. We are in holiday markets. And you will hear from me. I did promise you that we will go over the yearly charts. We will do that later next week. Um, because stuff is moving around so much that uh, these yearly candles are, are changing. Um, just for shits and giggles, because I haven't looked at this in a, a week or so. Let's take a look at our good friend Apple. And let's look at the... 12 month chart and whoops, APL. 
Um, yeah, well, you never know. You might still get it. <clears throat> I think we highlighted this last week, but it was a perfect doji <clears throat> where we opened and closed the year at 170, and now it's forming a reversal lower. But you never know. It's only a $20 bounce to get back to unchanged, and if we do, I will be buying, you know, probably three month and six month puts on this. That's a that would be an interesting pattern. All right, good luck. Uh, keep things tight, and we will speak to you sometime after Christmas, and we will go through. Uh, you know, if there's anything pressing, you'll hear from us on Twitter. All the best. Cheers.